Starting off, I just want to let you know that if, if you have any questions, feel free to join my Discord channel. The link will be in the description down below. Here I'll be able to help you one-on-one -on -one if you have any questions about any of the videos that I provide, or you can even ask some of the people that are already in here. I'm sure they will be happy to help as well. That being said, let's get straight into the video. The application we're going to create today is this application that you're seeing right here. It's a very simple application, but it gets the job done. It's going to let us read the data from an external source by clicking this import button. We're going to select the file. I'm going to demonstrate this in just a second, and it's going to append the text into the text box that you see right here. So import, let's do the sample data first. As you can see, it imports four lines of text. It's actually four lines and not you know, eight, because there's no space in between. We're going to fix the lining in the video as well. And then you can select something longer. Now this is going to take a bit longer and it's going to freeze the application for just a second. That being said, don't forget to subscribe if you're an active learner or if you have an interest for tech. Let's get started. And also feel free to like the video. It really helps the channel out. Let's get started. So start up by pulling up Visual Studio, clicking File, Project, and we're actually going to be using a WPF application. Forget about Windows Forms, forget about Console for now. Don't, don't get me wrong, Console is really good to start with. And if you want to get into UI to begin with, I would suggest, you know, just dabbling around with a Windows Forms app, but, you know, try to move over to WPF quite quickly because it's kind of the new standard. So it also allows you to do so much more, customize so much more things. So we're going to call this, uh, I'm reading. Cool. And as the application open, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do a vertical split on this des uh, design and assembly window by clicking this button right here. I'm also going to zoom in so you can see the code a bit better. The design window should be fine. We're going to start off with the UI. So let's change the title to reading data. Perfect. And uh, yeah, let's dig in straight away. So within our grid here, if you've done HTML before, this should not be too hard. You can see this as tag grid being the body of the application. So we're going to add a stack panel. What a stack panel does is, is it allows you to uh, to stack controls on top of each other. So if I were to do, if I were to add buttons real quick, two of them, self close these and actually give them some properties, my bad, height 25 and width, I don't know, 100. You don't have to type this out, but it's like, it's important for you to know how a stack panel to work. So we're going to add. As you can see, they stack on top of each other. For instance, if we had a grid, you can see that they all stack in front of each other. So removing those buttons and making this grid into a stack panel, we can now start adding some more controls. We're going to start off by, if we looked at the application, we want to start off by creating the button at top. Actually, let's change the width of the application so it's not as wide. Let's change the width from 800 to 400. You do so at the top. You can see that there's a width property for the, the window. So now that we got that done, we're actually going to add a button by typing that opening arrow and then button. And we can actually make this self close because we're actually going to add some properties and that's it. We'll start off by width. I usually go with 100, the height 25. The content is going to be the text that's on top of the button. So you know, if a button says click me, this is going to be the, the click me text, so to say. We're actually going to call this import. Now you can see that it added import to the button. Simple. All right, so let's add a margin so it's not stuck to the top. So our margin goes from left, top, right, and bottom. So zero to the left. And that will do 20 on top, zero, and zero. Perfect. Now let's give this button a name so we can identify it. So on identifier, we're going to do so by typing X colon and name. Some people might ask why do X? It's a good standard to use because it uses the namespace up here, the XAML namespace. So just roll with it for now. There's no, I just explained what it is. So there's not, don't feel, don't feel too confused. It's literally just a namespace. You could do without it, but again, it's just good standard. We're going to name this button read data and it's going to have a click event. So when we click it, you know, something's actually going to happen. So let's type click. You can see that it's the one with the lightning bolt because that defines an event. 
we're gonna generate a new one we're not gonna use that one we're gonna click that create method and it should create one for you i'm actually gonna no i should have to rename it but i will remove that i don't think you will get the data inside because i do not think you have resharper but if you do then you know just remove the code that was inside the button great now let's head back to the main window.saml and now that we're done with the button we're actually going to create a rich text box we're actually using a rich text box instead of the text box because it allows us to get the, the vertical scroll so rich text box perfect this is also going to be self-closed and we're going to give it a height of um, let's say 350 and uh, what else we're going to do a vertical alignment put it to bottom perfect and we're also going to do we're going to give it a name so x dot name or x colon name my bad tb data short for text box data and we're actually going to add the vertical scroll bar visibility to auto because it's hidden by default that is going to allow us to see the, the scroll bar on the right hand side whenever we import a bigger document now if we click f5 and debug this it might be slower the first time you run it but that's again just because it's the first time let's see it looks great now the button doesn't really do anything we could actually add some some margin to uh, to the button so it's not stuck to this as well so let's do that real quick and as i said it's uh, left top bottom uh, or left top right and bottom so we're going to change the bottom and as we do that we can see on the button that it looks better a lot better cool now heading back to our cs file and in our button we're actually going to start you know adding some functionality to the button so let's do var oft equals new open file dialog perfect if you haven't worked with var before it's a much more dynamic keyword so that the compiler can implicitly assign the data type because if we hover over the name we can see that this variable is a open file dialog now we could specify it here open file dialog. we could be really explicit and do that but the compiler is smart enough that we can implicitly use var and it's going to during runtime it's going to compile and it's going to you know understand what type it is right so let's add a filter ofd.filter this is going to filter you know when you open a file dialog like let's say file open part solution you can see that we have a bunch of folders we have the, the sln file etc etc down here we want to sort it to just text files so let's do ofd filter equals and a string we're going to say text files and then this is I don't even know what this is. It's like a line, a straight up line. And we're gonna do star.txt, meaning everything.txt. Perfect. Now, whenever we click the button, well, it won't do anything just yet, but when we click the button, it's only going to show text files. A letter C text files. So let's do if OFD, I actually gotta do this because we're really sharper. OFD dot show dialog equals equals true now if it returns true the show dialog meaning that if we clicked ok on the button the show dialog button we want something to happen right we're actually going to create a separate method for this so head down under our private void button read data we're going to create a private string array that's the return type get text and it's going to take a parameter being file path Let's change it right here file path perfect and it's throwing an error now because it's not returning anything we need it to return something to be more specific we got to return a string array so return file dot re oh you gotta import the namespace the, the system dot io file file as you can see uh, files in the system dot io and as soon as i import that it should add the yeah there system.io now we can use that class system.io read all text or read all lines this one might confuse you but it's actually read all lines perfect and the file path we want to specify is the file path parameter that we declared earlier and that's it so whenever we call this get text it's going to return a string array as you can see read all lines returns the string array as well perfect so there's a few ways you could do this First way would be creating a variable, call it lines. Again, we're being 
very implicit about what data type we're using because the compiler is smart enough to understand which one it is. Equals get text because as you remember this returns a string array. So this is going to be a, as you can see a string array variable. And the path is actually OFD, the open file dialog, dot file name because the file name that we choose, that's the path to the file. Now we could do for each variable within lines, as you can see each line, and then you know do something right here. But that would be one more line of code. We could actually do it like this. We could get the get text. Actually, let's do let's start copy and paste. Let's for each line in get text and then pass it in here. OFD dot file name. Perfect. One less line of code. And now the last step. Let's actually append the data that we have to the text box. If you remember what you named it, for me it's T well yeah, TB data. So TB data dot append text line and we're actually going to append it a you know a line and then a new line so there's like it's not one after the other we do so by typing environment new line so and there we go new line Oop. perfect now let's try this out real quick so f5 to debug it import and we're actually going to select the smaller text file as you can see it works just fine now, I don't like the, how much space there is in between the lines, so let's fix that real quick. This is not something that's going to break the application if you haven't done this. So, you know, if you don't want to add spacing, if you like it, you like it the way it is, then feel free to have it like that. Me, personally, it's a personal preference, so I'm actually going to, uh, you know, change the, the spacing a bit. So, heading to, take to the rich text box control, let's remove the self-closing tag and let's open it up again. Perfect. Now I need to mess a bit with the text box resource resources. So let's do rich text oh, rich text box the resources. And within the resources, we want to add the style. Oh, there we go. And then with the target type. So let's specify the target type. And it's going to be how okay, so the curly brackets <laughs> do x colon type paragraph because that's what the type that we're specifying. And then we need to define a, a setter, which is going to handle it for us, the spacing. And the property is going to be the margin because that's what we want to change. So margin and the value is going to be zero. We can actually self-close that one. So if we try this again, import. As you can see, to me, it looks a lot better. All right, that's the application. I hope you learned something. It was kind of simple, wasn't it? Even though, even if it was your first time using WPF, I, I hope you understood and was following along because WPF is actually a really strong tool to use. The framework is amazing. SAML can be a bit scary in the beginning, but trust me, it's so nice. All right, well, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, I see you in the next one.